All right, what's going on, guys? It is your boy TKD123 here, back in your boys and source. And of course, we are doing what the towel says, what the thumbnail says. Y'all have been watching the Ratchet Clank stream series. It did wrap up, I think, two weeks ago at this point. So I've taken a little time to kind of step back and, you know, re observe all the games I played in the Ratchet Clank series. And we're going to rank them finally as the end of the stream series. Now, there's a few things here I want to highlight before we get into the whole ranking. It's that one, I only played the mainline story game so i didn't do like secret agent clank i didn't do i think there's one called like before the nexus i didn't do those games i just did the main core games that tell the core plot of ratchet and clank uh from the first game all the way up until into the nexus slash i guess ratchet and clank 2016 technically but y'all know what i'm saying there right so i only played those and i also have a little discrepancy with a crack in time so if you guys missed that stream you guys weren't aware maybe you saw it on twitter uh, i did have a little problem with a crack in time where i was not able to complete the full game and beat the full game as me playing it y'all 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 remember when dina told ellie that they should be terrified of her hello hello is this game okay how does the game fr we're streaming this game on the server how does that happen sway so I did be about 75% of that game. I had to watch the end 25%. So uh, I am going to rank it here, but definitely do keep that in mind. And I will definitely remind you guys when we get to a crack in time on this ranking list, because I'm not about to spoil it right now. Come on, man. But uh, you know, that is a little thing that we do have to lay out there first and foremost. But starting off here, let's start at the very bottom of the list, the bottom of the barrel. And if you enjoyed this ranking, make sure to give it a like and uh, let me know your ranking down below in that comment section. But starting off here, Ratchet and Clank Quest for Booty at the number eight slot. Listen, Quest for Booty was a really big waste of time. <laughs> I mean, like, it's not really a big waste of time because it's only like a two hour game. So it wasn't the biggest deal in the world. It's a quick thing to get through, you know, but it just feels overall ultimately just really not necessary in a lot of different ways okay so this is off the back of tools of destruction so that gameplay is on point i gotta admit you know gameplay is fine it's not you know and really ultimately uh aside from one game that we will get to ultimately i feel that all the games gameplay is pretty spot on there's a lot better gameplay than others in other game but overall for the you know majority of the games the gameplay is gonna be pretty much on point but this game just had a really weird story a weird repetitive you know of objective system where you were doing just random things I felt like just to fill time that didn't really feel that great and and really honestly what you got out of the story wasn't that great like yes we are pursuing Clank after Dr. Nefarious takes Clank and well I guess technically the Zonies take Clank well both in the same you know the Zonies take Clank in Tools of Destruction and you know this is supposed to portray Ratchet trying to find Clank which is cool but I just don't feel that it was really done in a very cool way over Overall, so uh, you know, although it does tee up a crack in time, you know, Quest for Booty, I feel like is definitely at the bottom of the list. Next up here at number seven, we have Ratchet and Clank Going Commando. This is the second game in the franchise, and typically, I feel that a very, very good sequel to an initial game is when you take the first game and really refine it you know i'm looking for refinement in the second game of any franchise right like that's what i feel makes a great sequel uh and then the third game is where you you know refine even more and maybe do some different things that we will see overall in the ratchet and clank original trilogy but this second game i just feel like didn't refine that much like yeah there was some cool stuff in there but ultimately i feel like it was a very uh much more on the side of being a ratchet and clank one just longer and just have more stuff in there as opposed to being a true refinement of the first game just from my personal opinion you know what i'm saying like i know a lot of people may disagree with that but that's just how i feel about it personally i feel like you know there were some really cool platforming sections right you know there was some really cool stuff really cool environments all that good stuff and really cool world building as well uh with different characters that come back from the first game but ultimately i feel like its story is kind of uninteresting and everything Thing. I just didn't feel like it was, you know, that great of a game overall from story perspective uh, from that whole standpoint. Um, and last of the year, I do gotta say is that this game has very weird difficulty ramps that kind of made no sense. Like, you know, I, 
I think I was playing on normal and there were some you know really odd things where I'll go to another planet and the and the like difficulty will spike really really high just randomly so I feel that you know that could have done a little bit better on balancing overall but ultimately you know all these games are good gameplay wise overall uh you know from across the standpoint uh but going commando i feel like just was not as great as you know a second game should be at least in my opinion next up here we have ratchet and clank into the nexus now while i do have some things that i think that you know this game should have been put on the ps4 should have been a launch ps4 right like this came out late ps3 back in 2013 the same year as the ps4 came out and i feel like you know this game i think it's big Biggest detriment and biggest suffering is its overall performance um, I think there are some gameplay segments where you will see it here in the footage maybe on the trailer or whatever uh, but into the Nexus runs at 30 frames um, it was the first 30 frames Ratchet & Clank that I encountered uh, on this stream series aside from Ratchet & Clank 2016 which we will get to that because they updated that whole thing but beside the point 30 frames and it's a very inconsistent 30 frames that definitely you know had some combat things where the gameplay you know in spite of the frame rate being inconsistent and being 30 frames it was still a pretty good you know fun game to play at least you know so at least it's going for that for sure um but i feel like its performance is definitely where its biggest flaw is and i wish that this game was a launch ps4 game i think that would have been great but overall um i do feel that you know aside from the baller the fire key art for this game this game's key art is amazing 10 out of 10 incredible i love it right but but you know even aside from that i feel that this game into the nexus has some of the best boss fights in the entire series if not the best boss fights in the series like there are some really cool boss fights where you are going one-on-one -on -one with a, just a big boss and it just feels really really cool there are other really good bosses in the games overall but i feel like into the nexus you know given its size which again is another shorter experience like like uh quest for booty it's a little bit longer than uh that game i think i'd be into the nexus and then I think two or three episodes um, and it was around like six hours or so but uh, I do feel that you know there are pound for pound really really good combat experiences in terms of bosses uh, in into the Nexus and you see that focus throughout the whole game right so generally speaking overall while while this game is important because this leads right into Rift Apart I feel that you know it's uh, performance definitely is what is taking it down a couple notches for me personally next up here Ratchet and Clank 2016 now I'm a little mad at insomniac i'm a little mad at this game i know i shouldn't be but i'm a little bit salty okay because they put out a 60 frames per second update for ps5 for this game literally the day i'm recording this video so i would have loved to go and play this game in 60 frames on stream but i will be doing a comparison video uh for you guys in the future so definitely look out for that comparison video because i'm definitely going to work on that but overall this game does run at 30 frames but it is a very consistent and smooth 30 frames which for me i'm cool with that as long as a 30 frames is you know consistent it's not obviously my preferred frame per second but it's a frame per second that i can tolerate if it's consistent so this game in terms of combat in terms of just overall just when you're exploring the world is butter smooth it's it's lock 30 it feels great on the sticks it looks great as well of course being the latest ratchet and clank game to come out and uh, you know due to it being a movie about a game a, wait a game about a movie about the game that's how it goes that whole thing um its story definitely feels fast and loose right it's from the perspective uh of captain quark about the first game and while i do think that's a cool premise like i think that's a very very interesting and cool way to take a kind of pseudo remake of the first game i would have kind of honestly a little bit wanted it to be more of a true uh you know remake of the first game and retelling of the first game like it is pretty much like a quick hits greatest hits of ratchet and clank one which although you know when you take that and you couple it with hey this was never meant to be a remake it was just to be a game that was about the movie that was coming out around that time back in 2016 overall i feel like it does a pretty good job at being at its heart still a ratchet and clank game you know what i'm saying there's some weird things where in dialogue things like in and like in cutscenes, uh some of the characters just have blank stares when they're talking to someone and that is definitely odd because we had never seen that in the previous games um uh from like a from like a very much like bold standpoint obviously 
obviously those existed in the past but not as prominent as this game and you wouldn't expect that from a 2016 game especially from a you know triple a studio like insomnia games but overall you know gameplay wise it's great i think that overall there are some really cool clank gameplay parts as well that uh now while not the best clank puzzles in the whole franchise i think there were some really good ones here overall that really had you thinking really kept you on your toes and overall definitely if you have a ps5 i would recommend playing this game because it's in 60 frames right now it's a great game overall pound for pound definitely recommend it here at the number five slot all right guys next up here at number four and before we get there right before we get there just know that all of these four games that i'm about to say are in a tier of elite status okay a lot of these games are phenomenal 10 on 10 but you know it's such a big list we gotta rank them okay so at the number four slot we're taking it all the way back to the original game ratchet and clank the og it's super good it's super fun it laid down the foundation for this gameplay system that ultimately didn't change that much throughout each game and honestly didn't really need to to be honest like the game is fantastic and the gameplay itself is really at its core what ratchet and clank is all about aside from of course ratchet and clank themselves which is where we first meet them here in this first game they have a really cool first meeting and it's iconic as hell like at least in my opinion and uh you know overall there are some jokes that honestly Honestly, of course, don't really, uh, you know, mesh well in today's age, right? Like, there's some, you know, just, you know, slapstick jokes that aren't really that cool or, or that, you know, fantastic in the modern day. But aside from all of that, there's great characters, great weapons. It's a great premise. And it's really shocking how much the first Ratchet and Clank game actually holds up to today's standards. Like, yeah, it's an old game for sure, right? It's definitely an old game. But with Blue Point's remaster, there is a certain level of just modernity is that a word modernity modern feeling uh with this game that definitely holds up in my opinion so ratchet and clank first game it's the og it's it's definitely what what you know obviously started this franchise and what i think paved the way for such a great franchise overall in its entirety now a lot of these games like especially uh you know the first rise and clank and i think the second one too in going commando um had pretty tough boss fights i'm not gonna lie like they had some pretty bs and boss fights but ultimately speaking overall uh you know aside from that and also there's issues where i feel like the game doesn't properly like convey and tell you that there are upgrades to be found like sometimes they're very random and very much like you can just stumble across them which you know might have been just the old ways of how games were able to give you upgrades and everything but ultimately speaking Ratchet and Clank is a great game to lead off the franchise and start a franchise that is so iconic okay at the number three spot we have another you know first beginning in the franchise that is of course Ratchet and Clank Tools of Destruction, the first Ratchet and Clank game on PS3, which started, of course, the Future Trilogy. And so this is such an interesting game to go to, right? Like, this is where we really saw an evolution in the franchise. Of course, going into the Future Trilogy, where we have, uh, you know, Tools of, we have Tools of Destruction, then we have uh, Quest for Booty, and then into the next, no, sorry, and then Crack in Time, and then into the Nexus, as those four encapsulating the, the uh, whole franchise in the future and i'll say that tools of destruction is a really really great one and definitely is one of my favorites not my favorite uh you know uh, uh whole game in the entire trilogy of the future but definitely a great one this is where we got introduced to really really cool ways to uh grind for different weapons and while we had other you know systems like that in the past trilogy this game introduced the smuggler character where we have you know different bounties that he will give us different ways to be able to get more bolts to get more upgrades and all that and i think that that was such a crucial thing to the overall game that i think it was really really well done in this game and really laid on the precedent moving forward uh this game by far has the best ship battles by far they were so fun to play i loved the ship battles on this there was something about the way those ships controlled in that game and like this like kind of dual stick type of control system that i adored in this game i loved those space battles ultimately and overall it was a great way to start the future trilogy because of course the main thing about the future trilogy is that story we get to hear more about clank's past about the zonies about the other lombaxes about what happened to the lombaxes all that great stuff that we will again flush out a lot more in this next game that we will talk about later on but ultimately this is where we you know really see a focus in the russian clank series uh doubling down on its story and its lore 
and really exploring it in a lot of cool ways and this game started it all tools of destruction is fantastic i love it so much and uh yeah it definitely is a very good one and much deserving of that three spot but there's two games that are a lot better than it a lot better is probably you know over overshadowing the greatness that was tools of destruction but right after it we have of course a crack in time at the second slot now honestly guys if there was a reality where i was able to beat this game its entirety and play through that ending i think this could have been my favorite ratchet and clank game of all time because it was and is a lot of people's favorite ratchet and clank game to date but i honestly with a clear conscience cannot put it at the number one slot i hope you guys can understand that and ultimately you know even if i did play through its ending i do feel that there's another game that i think is my favorite overall but uh ratchet and clank a crack in time uh uh, the story is phenomenal. The story is phenomenal. It's such a great story. We see, you know, Clank going through this struggle of understanding who he is and what he is here for and why was he created and what his role will be in the future or, you know, what is supposed to be in the future as well as, of course, Ratchet's legacy, figuring out the Lombaxes, meeting Alistair, Alistair explaining his backstory, Alistair knowing Ratchet's dad, them trying to bring back the age of the Lombaxes and bring him back from where every they are in the galaxy like it is such a cool story where you know like i just think they just expanded these characters that we love so much and added so much story and lore to them that was good story and lore not just like fluff or whatever like really really cool stuff that i love even small touches like when you're playing as clink and you're in that like weird like dream type of scape where you're seeing all the different realities right you see past Ratchet and Clank games up in the distance. Like, it's so cool the way they did that there. I just love that they put the stories of Ratchet and Clank at the center of this whole game, and it's really, really, really cool and really pays off. But I do feel that this game is a little bit, you know, interesting in a way where you aren't playing as Ratchet and Clank together. Like, you play as Ratchet, then you go back to Clank, and I feel that that, you know, kind of resulted in pacing that was a little bit questionable, and just the prospect of you not having Clank in the majority of the game overall like them being apart is kind of an odd choice but i will say that the clank sections are by far the best puzzles 2016 has some pretty good ones but in but here in a crack in time it peaked it peaked a lot they had really really good puzzles in uh the clank sections of this game they were super smart and really had me thinking on stream and it was great to solve it and the satisfaction you get after solving a clank puzzle is just phenomenal so overall while there was some weird things of you know not being able to play with clank uh through the majority of the game there were definitely some quality of life improvements that i definitely appreciated in terms of having your tool set be on the d-pad instead of being on the weapon wheel which made no sense to me to have those tools on the weapon wheel in the previous games now they're on the d-pad it was a great great quality of life improvement and a bunch of other things as well better weapons of course all the great stuff but overall you know clank uh has the best puzzling in this game and i think ratchet and clank as a whole had a much better story arc in this game overall it's a fantastic game of course doesn't need to be said the game plays top notch of course that's that's definitely not something to be critiqued on for this game as well so a crack in time definitely holds that second spot very comfortably but what is number one what is my favorite ratchet and clank game it is ratchet and clank up your arsenal pound for pound the best Ratchet and Clank game, 100% in my opinion. There was a lot of richer and vibrant environments, this being of course the third game in the original trilogy, where we really see them stretching out that PS2 and really, you know, taking uh, account for its power and really using it in all of its ways. And it's really cool to see the first Ratchet and Clank game and then see Ratchet and Clank uh, 3, which is of course up your arsenal. Like there was so many improvements there. The environments look great. I think that the game game is excellently paced i feel like it was a very very great pacing for this game overall you weren't staying too long in different planets and you were doing things that were definitely rewarding overall and you were always on the move always traveling and doing great stuff in it but what i love about this game is that hub space the phoenix i think this was such a great way to kind of let you decompress and choose what you want to do next do you want to upgrade your uh suit right now with more nail tech do you want to upgrade your weapons do you want to go and uh, explore new weapons and try them out so that if you want to buy them in the future you know what they're like do you want to talk to captain cork do you want to also play the hidden 
platformer, Quark's platformer. Uh, do you want to play that? Because that's a separate whole game in this game that blew me away. Um, there's so many good things to say about this game. Fire characters. Uh, I, I love this game. I love this game on top of the battle missions that you get that are optional and they allow you to rank up more and be able to have a path where you can easily rank up weapons or nanotech. I think this game is phenomenal, top notch, definitely in my opinion, the best Ratchet and Clank game. Ladies and gentlemen, that has been my ranking of the Ratchet and Clank games that I did play. Obviously not all the games, but the ones that matter to the main core storyline and uh definitely i'm interested to see where rift apart ranks in this whole thing because i gotta assume that rift apart might be the best of the franchise but we will have to see when that comes out i definitely expect a stream series along with guys stay tuned there's a certain road 2 series that might be happening here pretty soon you never know it might be coming a little bit sooner than y'all are expecting so uh definitely guys hope you guys enjoyed the ranking down below let me know your thoughts about the ranking what would you rank these games if you played them all let me know your thoughts in the comments below and make sure also while you are down there you can also check out our description where you can find links to our discord our twitter and our anchor link that way you can listen to our long form content and podcast format those of course being the safe slot podcast that gets uploaded every sunday as well as that new row 2 series that might be coming sooner than you all might think and uh, definitely down below you know all the good stuff those links and uh, leave a like if you enjoyed it as well as hit subscribe to playstation stories to keep up with the latest and greatest in playstation thank you all for watching and as always greatness awaits